Hey everyone, it's Triple Mango Threat or Ashley, and today I'm going over the five tips and tricks for EDH or Commander. Let's jump right into it. So number one, learn your phases. The seven phases are untap, upkeep, draw, main phase, combat, main phase, and step. Learning these will not only help you become a better player, but it's also going to help with cards that say at the beginning of your upkeep, draw an additional card. Your upkeep is before your draw step or draw phase, and this matters because some cards don't let us draw, or we can choose to skip drawing cards at our draw step. Also learning that you can cast spells after combat, this was one that blew my mind when I first started playing, and you may have not known this until now. Tip number two is priority. This is still a tough thing to learn or understand, but I promise, once you get the idea of how it works, you'll be able to start interacting with other players and not feel so lost. So let's say I'm casting a Harmonize. This spell does not resolve until each player in turn order decides that they are okay with it, and when I say okay, I'm giving each player an opportunity to interact with it. So assuming I'm player 1, I look to player 2, then 3, and then 4 to see if they want to counter it or cast something in response. Every time we cast a spell, activate an ability, or move to the next phase, each player gets a chance to respond. Now normally this doesn't happen because you don't have to stop at every phase or at every spell, because players normally wouldn't counter a harmonize. Diving in a little bit deeper, just last night I was in a game that player number 2 announced that he was moving to combat. Player number 4 said, well before you go to combat, I'll exile your commander. What just happened here is a response, and player number 2 went back to cast his commander again. And you're probably thinking, how can he cast his commander when they're still in combat. Well, they never went into combat. Whenever a player does something like this, like what player number four did, which was to cast something in player number two's main phase, we're still in the main phase. So player number two was simply saying, hey, I'm going to combat. Does anybody want to do anything about that without saying that? Or they were also asking, hey, I'm going to combat. Does everyone else want to go to combat? Magic is a game of chess in a sense, and it's a back and forth, and it's also asking for permission from the other players when we want to do something. Tip number three, read your cards. This may not mean anything to you, and you'll probably skip over this tip, but oftentimes I've played cards so much, or I've played against them, and I think I know what they do, when in all actuality, it does something completely different. We may have played this game for 10 plus years, but that does not mean we know it all. Tip number four, don't be afraid to play hug cards. And that's in quotes, because normally these cards are seen as cards you'd find in decks that promote group hug, or decks that help other players get ahead in the game. I say this because Rites of Flourishing is a great example of a hug card. It lets each player draw an additional card and play an additional land. Yes, you're helping not only yourself, but each player, and that's okay. This is a great budget option in a deck that wants to play additional lands. And if it's not in your budget, don't buy it. This is a game and real life takes priority over this. Tip number five, budget alternatives. If there's a card that players want, it will most likely cost more than what you're wanting to spend. Ristic Study, Exploration, or Demonic Tutor. These are all over $20 each. Well, if you're interested in these cards, but don't want to spend $20, you're in luck. There are budget options of these cards. This does not mean they're the same power level of these. There has to be some give since these will be budget options. So it will probably cost more mana and more hoops for you to go through to draw cards, play lands, or even tutor for a card. This game can be expensive and I won't lie about that, but it can be more affordable when we look at what other options we have. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope these tips and tricks have helped you and if they did, please let me know in the comments down below. If you'd like to see more of this, please leave a like and subscribe for more of this mango content. Thank you to the patrons who help support this channel, and I'll see you all in the next one. Uh, peace.